All right, so to defeat the Lich, what we need to do is, of course, get the Soul Cage and also use the Magical Formula. So we need to talk with the Blacksmith here. fire of the ghostly forge, a large, heavily muscled ghost with a full beard and mustache. He does not notice your approach. A deep furrow accentuated by thick eyebrows creases the ghost's wary brow. He doesn't look away from his work. I am Trent now, please. Leave me to my work. He continues hammering on a strangely shaped iron cage. Anger radiates from the large ghost in almost tangible waves. He looks up from the cage and you see that the light of the fire isn't coming from the forge. It's coming from his eyes. I built this cage to destroy that bastard, Hortense, who took my wife from me. For a moment you think he is going to strike out at you, then he unclenches his fist with a heavy sigh and returns to his work. When a hot tear slips from the ghost's eye and falls on the heated piece of the iron cage, it sizzles and then is gone. Lorino was my life, mine only joy in this world. His voice is almost tender. But then it returns to his guttural tones. He killed her and took that joy from me. Now I am only a hollow shell of a man, burning with hatred. He holds up one hand as you say the name of his late wife. Please do not say the name. It takes from me a little of mine hatred, which is all I have now. Without rob me of the one thing that keeps me alive, it would seem that he is unaware of the fact that he is indeed no longer alive. An odd expression crosses his face. I gave her a music box for our wedding, and now it is all I have left to remember her. Do thou see what thou hast done? I cannot work when I think of her. He returns to his work with renewed passion. You notice the music box he spoke of sitting nearby. If he heard you, he ignores the fact that you take your leave. You truly feel pity for this deeply wounded spirit. I got about a music box. Alright, so take the music box. And return to Castle of Doom to the north. box makes Rowena turn her head in your direction. She blinks several times as if waking from a dream, or in this case, a nightmare. When she sees the lich, she pretends to be enthralled, but as soon as he is no longer looking in her direction, she motions for you to come closer. I am in control of my mind for a time being, but I know not for how long. Tell me what has transpired in the town outside. You lay to her what you know of the events you've heard in town. My poor Trent, I cannot bear to think of what he's become so hurt that he would forget our love. She wrings her hand in sorrow and notices something on one of them. Please, me lord, would thou take this ring to him and tell him that I still love him. Mayhaps it will restore him to the beloved Trent I knew. She takes a ring from her slender finger and places it in your hand. You expect it to pass right through, but it rests neatly on your palm. I thank thee, kind sir. I know not how to repay thee. Marino's eyes begin to look a little glassy, and she blinks slowly as if entering a deep trance. What beautiful music, my lord. Horence once gave me a music box like this one. Rowena turns away distracted. Alright, let's take the ring. The wedding ring and return this to Hor or excuse me, to Trent, the blacksmith. Let's see if we can bring some sunshine to his gloomy day. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. 
Ain't no sunshine in Scarberry. Work in that soul cage. You hold out the ring to Trent. At first he ignores you, then recognizing the ring, he takes it from you and holds it before him. Something in him snaps, and his huge frame slumps forward. You let the ghost cry for a while, and when he finishes, you see a remarkable change in his appearance. The flames that once burned in his eyes are now gone, replaced by a deep shade of blue. He looks like a new man, or rather, ghost, as it were. Give my behavior, my lord. I know not what came over me. I remember flames, but they burned no hotter than my own hatred. He looks pained at the memory. Thou hast seen her. Thou hast seen Rowena. She still cares for me. Well, all the more reason to finish the soul cage. We must free her from Horn's vile sorcery. This is a special cage made to fit the shape of a man. Mistress Mordera says it would contain the lich Horns. Once it has been lowered into the well of souls, his voice seems much softer. Yes, that will help me free her, will thou not? A tinge of the edge comes back to his voice. His grip on the haft of his hammer relaxes and he smiles in gratitude. Thou could not know how much this means to me, I thank thee. I will need a bar of iron to complete the cage. Several can be found in the town cemetery. Please hurry, every second my love must endure. Horace's foul presence is like a knife in my ass. He begins to pace about the shop. Alright, well that sounds like it hurts, so... Let's get to the cemetery. Boo boo doo boo doo. Boo boo doo boo doo. pumpkins. Something coming for me? Holy shit, it's a ghost! The ghost got tore up from the floor. I'm not playing with the ghost. I'm not fucking playing with it. Seance spell wore off. Time to cast another one. He takes the iron bar from you. With this, I will finish it shortly. Wait here while I tend to the cage. Take the cage to Mrs. Mordor and she will tell you more about it and its use. There, it is done. Now take the blasted thing to Mordor. She will instruct thee. Won't fit. Bullshit. Uh, who the fuck's supposed to carry this thing? Mino's bag should be empty. Cage is made. The cell cage must be empowered with the might of the dead. The way to accomplish this is to go back to the dark tower to the well of souls. Thou must lower the cage into the well where the soul is trapped. 
there will lose a little of themselves to imbue it with the required power. I know this sounds harsh, but it is necessary even if thou wilt see them freed. The next step is to wait until midnight, then clap the cage upon the recumbent form of the lich. This is the period of time in which she trains the spirits of the townsfolk in the black service. After a brief moment, she continues, Finally, thou must pour a magical formula upon the lich. This formula is the same substance that destroyed the town. Do be careful when procuring it from the alchemist cane. Alchemist and get this potion made. That's not his house. need to tell thee the formula after what I have done to this town, art thou mad? I hope at least. Let's check with Martha for the correct proportions. Thou art truly insane, but there's nothing to lose but thy own life. First thou need three potions. Thou must place each one just below a connecting tube. The order matters not. Take an empty vial. I should have one here in my lab and set it below the nozzle. Then turn on the burner. After but a few mi minutes, the mixture will form, and the fill filled vial will be ready for thee. Shakalaka. All right, let's go dip this well of this cage of souls in the well of this cage. In the well of souls to make it a soul cage.
Right, we have the soul cage. Now we just gotta wait till midnight. <laughs> Damn it, Shimino. This is what happens when you don't have your fire sword out. No, I don't want to talk to you, Demon Sword. Alright, it's 11 o'clock. Fucking annoying, Jesus Christ, I can't see shit. Get the fuck out of my fucking way! Goddamn clouds! Can't see my goddamn bedroll. Somebody better pick that shit up. Gotta wait till midnight. We'll be back when it's closer. I'm not gonna make you watch till midnight. Alright. We're getting close to the witching hour. Four 
four minutes. Thought there were supposed to be a bunch of spirits up here. One minute. Here come the spirits. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I gotta drop it on them. Now we gotta do it. While well, he thinks he's soul sucking. Boom shakalaka. dissolves into dust, a great transformation comes upon the lich. Where the evil spirit was caged, you see the form of a familiar person. It's Horns! He's a ghost. He much more resembles a man than an undead terror. I thank thee, my lord. That dark spirit had suppressed my will for so long that I was not sure I had one left. Thou hast done a great deed. For Scarra Bray. For myself and indeed all of Britannia, but then... I suppose this is merely a matter of course for one such as thee. My gratitude is thine. He bows deeply to you. But now I fear that all is still not right with the world. The ether that steers chaotically outside of this dark tower. Were it not for some property within the walls, I fear my mind would suffer the ravages of its force. Now, my lord, I must ask ye this favor of thee. One of souls at the bottom of this tower holds my tormented souls within it and binds the spirits of Skara Breed to this island. It must be destroyed. Lawrence looks at you intently. I can only hope that thou wilt try to free them. Wilt thou? Lawrence looks as if he expected your response. I knew one so virtuous as thou would never turn aside while others suffer. Thy generosity seems to have no bounds. Lawrence thinks for a moment, and then, when the world is destroyed, the souls within will be released to float aimlessly upon the ether for our time. I have badly wronged the Lady Rowena and her husband. I will see this wrong mended, please. Lead her out of this dark place and see that she is reunited with Trent. In their way, they remain together when they are released. I will know when you've accomplished this task and we can continue with the destruction of the well. Got the ghost bitch or what?
let's try that again. I didn't have Ghost Bitch with me anyways, I had to talk to her. remains of his shop. When he sees you return, he rushes forward, looking for his love, Ruina. The star-crossed lovers rush into each other's ghostly embrace. For a time, it's hard to see where one spirit begins and the other ends. You barely make out the image of Trent replacing Ruina's ring on her finger. Then the two slowly turn to face you. Thou hast done so much for us. I hope that in helping us, thou can be assisted in thy own quest. He bows to you and then turns to regard his lovely wife. The destruction of the Well of Souls can only be brought by the own selfless sacrifice of a spirit. A living being will not do, because the soul is tied to the party. Go out into town and find a spirit willing to make sacrifice for the sake of all Scarabray. I suggest that thou should ask the Mayor Forsyth first, as it is his right to be considered before the others. He strokes his chin thoughtfully as you leave. The pale-looking ghost turns your... Hello, you have not met before. Right, it's the mayor. Kill yourself. Oh, goodness, Nerla, do not think I'm the one that wants us for that job. Neither I should think not. Maybe thou should ask all the other town folk first. If none of them will do it, I might just think about it. Yes, that's right. Thou should ask the others. Then come back here and tell me whose poor soul is. He smiles at his own cleverness. Oh, yes, yeah, right. I've forgotten to tell thee something. Now mayest come back and ask, all right. Oh. Sacrifice. You explain that you need a spirit to volunteer to freely enter the Well of Souls in order to bring about its destruction. Quentin considers for a while and then responds, Please understand me, Lord. I truly wish that I had that kind of courage, but I cannot risk doing anything that might destroy Marnie. Remember, her spirit is kept in that well, along with all the dead at the graveyard. And we will ask... sacrifice into the well of souls. Afterwards, Markham seems to think long and hard. So you're wanting me to go mad as a march, ha? Huh? And jump right into the well of souls. He looks at you incredulously. Listen now, I haven't had courage like that since I were a young lad. Since then, I've gotten some sense too. You'll have to look elsewhere for your sacrifice. Paulette turns to face you. Kill yourself, bitch! Not want to see me to jump in the well? Her eyes widen up with astonishment. Yes. The bells can go jump in a lake. 
She crosses her arms on her buxom chest and turns away from you angrily. All right, now we also gotta go ask Trent and Rowena and Kane and even the fucking ferryman. But I spend my eternity here in constant memory of those whom I've destroyed. Kane's not doing it. Smart man. Skeleton. In the closet. Of course, these two aren't going to sacrifice themselves. They just got back together. No, my lord, she is my life. If thou takest her, thou must take in my heart. Trin holds on tightly to his wife. No, my lord, thou must take my beloved from me so shortly after our reunion. Alright, so those two are holding on to each other. They're not gonna sacrifice themselves for crying out loud. Maybe Charon, the, the boatman, will. spark and make him sacrifice himself. Before you stands a tall skeletal figure in a ghostly boat. He holds out his hand to you and says in a sepulchral voice, I am the very man of Scarabari. I must pay two coins to cross the misty channel. Go kill yourself. Just for a moment you think you see a fleeting expression of hope cross the frame of skeletal features. Then it's gone. I must perform my duty until the end of eternity. Alright, so nobody's gonna do it. So sorry, fat mayor, you're gonna have to jump in the well and hope we don't get you stuck. But we'll have to wait for that until the next video. Thanks for watching.